for a year and a half I've been doing a business that I love. I really love it. And it's, it's not providing me with the financial part yet. And I know it will. And I'm wanting to know when will it happen. You know, what's, what's, I feel almost like I have a break on in, my, in myself. Well, that happens sometimes. Remember that the universe is responding to you in response to your feeling. Mm-hmm. And so sometimes when things dovetail with a subject like dollars, a subject that you and almost everybody else has pretty well practiced the feeling of not enoughness around, what happens is things can go very well. It's as you say, I'm having a good time. Things are expanding. I'm getting many new ideas. I'm, I'm feeling lots of energy flowing. But the dollars just aren't rolling in the way that I'd like. And we say it's usually because you've practiced for a while the feeling of not enough dollars. And so you really have to begin to imagine more dollars or get off the subject altogether. We want to be clear about that. You see, you do not have to launch an intention and then hold doggedly to that thought and only that thought in order for the universe to bring it in. It's not like casting out there with your great line and hooking onto this fish of something that you want and then having to keep tension on it in every moment or it will shake off and get away from you. It isn't like that at all. It is that once you have launched your intention, the universe is yielding it to you and unless you are offering a vibration that opposes it, it is going to come into your experience. So as you are moving through your experience and the idea of something that you want is born within you, you don't have to singularly think about that in order, until it comes about. You can launch an idea and never think about it again and the universe will yield it to you because if you have gathered enough enough contrast to give birth to the desire, it is yours. In other words, and there's enough energy to bring it to you. But what often happens with people is that they have this contrasting experience which launches the desire. The non-physical energy is answering it, and so the desire is being answered. But then they're noticing, oh, it isn't happening, or it's not coming, or they are offering thoughts that are in opposition to it which keep holding it apart. So it's like the donkey and the carrot. Every step you take forward, the carrot takes a step forward too. And so the way you close the gap between the two is by releasing any thought that contradicts it. Mm -hmm. Well, if it is a subject that you don't think about much, then it is conceivable that you could launch it and just leave the idea alone and it would show up in your experience and you would say, oh, I have this vague recollection of saying I wanted that and look, here it is. Mm -hmm. But when it is a subject like dollars that play into your experience on so many levels uh, so many times in a day, it is not likely that you're not going to have thoughts around that subject. In other words, what we're saying is not likely that you're going to leave that subject alone. And so when there is a subject that has to do with something that you want and it's not likely that you can just not think about the subject, then it is really worth working to bridge your belief about it, working to shift your vibration about it. And the way you do that is just by sort of taking the bull by the horns and talking about the subject with the deliberate intent of bringing yourself to a place of feeling better about it. So does that mean I have to, you know, with the five kids, it's hard to, I don't want to work really hard at anything active, you know, physical life. So well, you see, do you, hear, do you hear what you keep doing here? And you're not alone in this. You've already forgotten the manager because all of this has been your responsibility. The five kids are my responsibility. All their happiness is my responsibility. Everything's my responsibility. I've got so much responsibility. I don't have time to do the things I really want to do. And what we're wanting you to realize is it doesn't take very much time to feel an idea be born and ponder it and and muse it for the pleasure of doing so and then delegate to the manager. In other words, people will say to us, I can't just quit my job and go sit on the beach and meditate or I can't can't stop what I'm doing and just imagine I have children to feed or dishes to wash or things to do. And we say, we're not encouraging you to stop the action part of your life. We're encouraging that you act just a little bit less and that you envision just a little bit more. What we would like to say to you is that there is power in lining up energy, the likes of which in your action orientation you don't really know. When you find a thought and you hold that thought purely for as little as 17 seconds, now there's a lot of power in the word pure because pure means a not contradicted thought. 
When you find a thought of something wanted and you hold that purely by imagining it, pretending it, remembering something like it, musing it, when you hold that thought for as little as 17 seconds, another thought of the same vibrational equivalent because of law of attraction joins it. And when those two thoughts come together, there is an explosion of energy. So in order to give you an idea of the power of the thought, we would say to you that when that first 17 seconds joins, that there is an energy expansion that is equivalent to about 2,000 action hours. That's huge. When you cross the next 17 second mark, the expression of energy is 10 times the first. 20,000 action hours just by walking across that next mark. When you hold it for the third sequence of 17 seconds, another 10 times. Each time there is another 17 seconds of non-contradiction, the thought catapults into a whole new level. So that 68 seconds of pure thought has huge action consequences. You see, that's why we say one who's connected to source is many, many, many times more powerful than one who is not because there is no self-defeating that is going on, you see. Did we get to the heart of it? I think that's good. Thank you. Be playful about it all. I want to give you one more thing here. Sometimes our friends will come to a gathering like this and they will say, well, here I stand while this is where I would rather stand. And then they say, Oh, and Abraham has given us a process so that we can get from here to over here. I'm going to offer this visualization to get from here to over here. And what happens is, as you are offering any process to get from here to here, what happens is you're vibrating in both places. So you can't move from where you are. Not, nothing changes for you. So you can make much faster progress if you say, I'm offering this visualization not to get from here to over here, but I'm offering this visualization for the pleasure of the visualization. When you go to a movie, you don't say to your friends, I'm going to this movie because it's about things I want to live, and I think if I go watch the movie, I'll vibrate like the movie is vibrating, and then the universe will yield to me. Although that's not a bad way of approaching a movie. But you don't go to the movie with that intention. You go to the movie for the entertainment. You go to the movie for the distraction. And that's the way we want you to begin going to the visualization. Don't visualize to make something happen. Visualize for the pleasure of visualizing. So I just have to have a good time. You're just wanting to use any excuse in the world to let it in, to let it in, to let it in. The universe knows what you want. You just got to let it in. Thank you. Indeed. <laughs>